Television might seem like a factory of dreams for us who watch it, but in reality it's a cold and unforgiving business. Dozens of pilots are written and pitched on a weekly basis and only a small percentage of them actually makes their way to the screen. And even when the pilot makes it, there's no guarantee that the series will be a success or even that it will have any sort of a meaningful run. Ratings dictate the destinies of all shows and they can sometimes be cruel even to the most talented and creative artists. So with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with What Culture, and here are 10 great TV shows that got cancelled after just one season. Number 10. Invasion Invasion was a science fiction show created for ABC by Sean Cassidy, a veteran TV producer most notable for his work on American Gothic and Cold Case. Featuring an ensemble cast led by William Fickner, Eddie Cyprian and Kari Matchett, the show focused on the inhabitants of a small Florida town who get invaded by parasitical aliens in the aftermath of a big hurricane. It was well received by critics at the time, but it never really got the viewership it deserved, partly because of the unfavourable time slot it aired right after Lost, and partly because of the hurricane themes that were maybe a bit too much too soon after the Katrina events in New Orleans. Looking back on it now, it's easy to understand why the critics loved it. The concept was fairly simple, but it was well written, it had a great cast of interesting and layered characters. It also had a great feeling of mystery. Watching it felt like you were slowly peeling off the layers of the story episode by episode. It was initially planned to have five seasons, but it ended up with 22 episodes in total, and with 16 years now gone, it's highly unlikely we'll see more of it. Number 9. Good Girls Revolt Based on the 2013 Lynn Povich book, Good Girls Revolt tells the real-life inspired story of female employees of a New York magazine in the 1960s. The show was created by Dana Calvo for Amazon Prime Video, and it starred Genevieve Angelson, Anna Camp, and Erin Dark, among others. Because of the time period and the general aesthetic of the series, it was often compared to Mad Men by critics. However, in the 10 episodes that made it to the screen, Good Girls Revolt never really reached the polished look or the nuanced delivery of the Matthew Weiner classic. But the foundations were good and there was potential for the series to go up a level, but it never got the time to. The folks at Amazon were impatient and ultimately cancelled it in December 2016, citing low viewership figures as the reason. One glimmer of hope for its revival lies in the fact that the rights are owned by Sony, and there have been reports that they are trying to sell it elsewhere. Number 8. The Black Donnellys this drama debuted on NBC in 2007, but it never really took off despite having some serious name recognition behind the camera and a very talented cast. It was conceived by Paul Haggis and Robert Moresco, the duo who won an Academy Award for Crash. It was about four young Irish-American brothers who get involved with organised crime while living in present-day New York City. It was a subject very close to Haggis as he grew up in London, Ontario, where the original Donnelly family is from. Serious themes like racism, classism and crime were explored without much filter, and that made for a very immersive viewing experience. While it sounds like something that could find its home on HBO or Netflix, The Black Donnellys was unusually graphic and violent for network television, especially for the time, and that was probably what doomed it from the start. NBC gave up on it after just six episodes, opting to pull it from their programming and release the remaining seven on their website on a weekly basis. Needless to say, that put the final nail in the coffin. Number 7. Almost Human this promising cyberpunk cop drama was created by sci-fi veteran J.H. Wyman and starred the dynamic duo of Carl Urban and Michael Ely and even had J.J. Abrams attached as an executive producer. However, that still wasn't enough to help it reach more than a single season. The premise of Almost Human is this. In the year 2048, the crime rate has risen so much that there was no way for the police to stay on top of it, so they decide to pair each of their human officers with an android one. The plot was thin and exposition heavy at first, but there was enough action and excitement to keep you entertained and kickstart the series until it found its footing. That was unfortunately never the case, as Fox cancelled it after only 13 episodes. Since the episodes were largely self-contained, Almost Human still has a high rewatchability value. The interplay between the two main characters is very entertaining, and even now, nine years after it debuted, the visual effects look stunning. Number 6. Everything Sucks this parody of classic teen dramas was authored by Ben York Jones and Michael Mohan, and its only season was released on Netflix in February 2018. The story is set in a town fittingly called Boring. 
a real place by the way, in 1996 and it follows a group of high school students as they navigate the issues of sexuality, identity and belonging. On the surface, it might seem like a typical coming of age drama, but its intentional overuse of genre tropes and cliches hints that the show is not taking itself too seriously. Ironically, even though it's supposed to be a parody, the characters come off as more believable and realistic than they normally do in shows like this, and that's where the main strength of Everything Sucks lies. Unfortunately, the characters were never given enough of a chance to be fully fleshed out, so after just 10 episodes, some of them seemed more like sketches than actually developed characters. This is especially true for the supporting roles. In the end, Netflix decided to cancel any further production just two months after it was first streamed, stating that not a lot of people watched it beyond the first episode. Number 5. Awake Kyle Killen created this police drama with a fantasy twist that features the brilliant Jason Isaacs in the leading role. Even though it received nearly universal critical acclaim, its low ratings meant that NBC pulled the plug after a single 13-episode season. Awake has a very unique and interesting premise. In the first episode, Michael Britton, a detective, gets into a car accident with his wife and son. After the accident, he keeps jumping between a reality in which his wife died and one in which his son died. Utterly confused by this, he tries to piece it all together and figure out which one of those is the actual reality. The series is carried by an excellent performance from Isaacs, and if it wasn't for that, it probably wouldn't even make this list. He manages to strike the perfect balance between a heartbroken family man dealing with his pain and a detective who gets lost in his work. However, the clever writing and great acting were not enough to attract a significant audience, and Awake went off the air in 2012. Number 4. Freaks and Geeks Freaks and Geeks has now become a staple of every cancelled too soon list. Created in 1999 by Paul Feig and more famously executive produced by Judd Apatow, this cult classic lasted only 18 episodes, but it created a legacy that is still going strong. A textbook example of a good coming of age story, Freaks and Geeks brings the perfect combination of comedy and drama. Its characters seem like genuine people who you might have gone to high school with, and the show leverages that nostalgia to get you invested in the story. Lines. Apart from great writing, the characters benefit from a very talented cast who breathe life into them. People like James Franco, Seth Rogen and Jason Segel were virtual unknowns at the time, but used the show as a springboard for their careers. Sadly, the production was notorious for constant creative differences and conflicts between the creators and the network, and that culminated in its cancellation halfway through the first season. However, that wasn't the death of the Freaks and Geeks legacy. Far from it. Just a couple of years later, Apatow would create Undeclared, a spiritual successor to it that featured some of the same cast and and followed the characters through their college life. Number 3. Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip Aaron Sorkin penned this comedy drama for NBC in 2007, but despite having a lot of talent both behind and in front of the camera, it only lived for one season. Studio 60 depicted a behind-the-scenes look at the production of a sketch comedy show and had an intriguing combination of drama, comedy and meta-comedy. The pilot was incredibly well-received, with critics praising the directing and the performance of Matthew Perry in particular. But after the pilot, things started going downhill. The writing would start to fluctuate in quality, often going from satire to self-satire and losing that self-awareness that is crucial in a show like this. The ratings would drop with every episode and soon enough the writing was on the wall. NBC would shift it around in different time slots, eventually deciding to not pick it up for a second season. Despite this, Studio 60 ranks so high on our list for a simple reason. When it was good, it was really good. The talent involved was so bright that it would shine through even when the direction of the show was unclear, and in those instances when everything clicked and everything was on the same page, Studio 60 was a hell of a watch. We can only regret that it wasn't given more time to define its direction and plant its feet firmly on the ground. Number 2. Trophy Wife Released on ABC in 2013, this delightful comedy from the minds of Emily Halpern and Sarah Haskins was a revelation of refreshing humour in a genre that had been stale for a long time. Trophy Wife follows Kate Harrison, played by the wonderful Marlin Ackerman, as she leaves her party girl lifestyle behind after falling in love with and marrying a middle-aged man. Parallels with The Modern Family were obviously drawn, but Trophy Wife had an identity of its own, largely based on goofy but believable characters, clever irony and great chemistry. 
history. It was a sitcom in format, but it avoided falling into the usual tropes by respecting its audience and not underestimating it. It was intelligent but not conceited, it was funny but not over the top. Its only major flaw is its unfortunate title, which undersells the plot and reduces Ackerman's character and performance to something it's not. For whatever reason, the folks at ABC didn't seem to appreciate Trophy Wife enough and kept putting it in the least attractive time slots, which kept it from reaching a greater audience and practically doomed it. Number 1. Firefly Not sure what you expected, but number 1 was always going to be reserved for Firefly. Joss Whedon's cult classic premiered on Fox in September 2002, and despite only lasting for 14 episodes, it fostered a devoted audience that would help it expand its legacy beyond television. For those who are unfamiliar with the plot, Firefly follows a renegade crew aboard a small spacecraft 500 years in the future, travelling the unknown parts of the galaxy, trying their hardest to avoid different warring factions as well as the authorities. The crew is played by a hugely talented ensemble cast that includes Nathan Bill Gillian, Gina Torres, and Alan Tudyk. Whedon originally intended the show to have a seven-season run, but Fox executives were not happy with the low ratings and binned it after only 11 of the 14 episodes had aired. Despite this, Firefly went on to enjoy a second life post-cancellation, first developing a fandom after being released on DVD. An entire Firefly media franchise would later be developed by Whedon & Co. Its highlight was the 2005 feature film Serenity, but beyond that, numerous comic books, video games, and novels were produced. They're probably isn't a better example in history of a show being able to create an entire universe based solely on the support of its fans, with no help from the network that first aired it. And that concludes our list. If there are any you think we missed, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.